Hey everyone, how's it going? Azrin the Language Nerd here. Hope you're doing very, very well. I wanted to make a quick little video today talking about study abroad programs, aka when you go to a different country and study the language of that country in that country. So this is something I've done various times. So I've studied abroad. I've studied Gujarati in India. I've studied Mandarin in China. I've studied French in France. I've done uh, Spanish in Peru. Like I've done this many, many, many times. And it's something that has served me extremely well. Honestly, guys, I don't think I would speak the languages that I speak at the same level that I do if I hadn't have done all of the study abroad and all of the, you know, basically all the studies that I've done in the country that speaks the languages that I speak. That being said, here's the thing. In my perspective, I don't necessarily think that studying abroad and doing a study, a study abroad program, I don't think it's like a magic bullet. I don't really think that's how it works because I've seen both sides of the equation. I've seen people like me who go abroad, they spend three months in China, they spend three months in Spain, they spend three months in France, in England, and in, in USA, in Japan, in whatever country. They go there, they study, they live abroad, and suddenly something clicks in their brain and they come back to their home country and they speak really well. Their accent's really good, they understand everything, they can communicate, they can talk, they can have fun. And all of a sudden they make videos online or they tell their friends, they talk about it, you hear them, you see them and they, and they go and you ask them, what was the thing, what was the unlock for you? What allowed you to be able to really take your language skills to another level? And they say, oh, I traveled abroad and I had no choice but to learn. I had no choice, I had to speak, I had to go communicate, this, that, the other thing. However, you've also seen, or at least I've seen, the other side of the equation. I've seen people, I met people who've been living in China for 10 years and literally could barely, barely order their food in a restaurant or barely introduce themselves and all they do is they speak English. And yet they've been in the country, they've been in the same environment, immersed for 10 years. And even sometimes these people that I, that I see, they're taking classes too. So it's not even like they're completely removed from society and and they've just found this English community to live in, which is, by the way, partially true, but it's not the full truth, right? I've seen that. I've seen I, I, I've seen people who who've come to Canada, and even though they've been here for a long time, they were really introverted and they were really shy, and all they did is sit in their house all day, sit in their apartment all day, all day, and they watched. TV in their mother tongue. They they didn't get out there because they're too nervous and shy and scared. I've seen people, I've seen it all. I've seen a lot of it. And it leads us to the question of, well, how valuable is studying abroad? Is it valuable? And how the heck do you know if studying abroad is going to work for you or if it's not going to work to you, work for you? How do you know? Well, there's a few things you need to look at. The first thing to understand about these study abroad programs is, is that all it really does is it gives you various opportunities. Way, actually, let me rephrase that. It gives you lots and lots, infinite, unlimited opportunities to practice and to learn whatever language that you are trying to learn. When you are in your home country, it's not the same way. You can't literally walk out your door and start seeing signs and seeing things and hearing people talking in a different language. You're going to hear stuff and see stuff in your mother tongue and whatever or whatever language is used in the country that you live in. If you travel abroad, boom, instantly everywhere you look, everywhere, literally everywhere, what you see is the language you're trying to learn. So it just gives you all it's doing is it's giving you an infinite number of opportunities. OK, here's the thing, though, you have to actually do something with those opportunities. You have to actually take advantage of it. It's like if I give you a hammer and I give you, if I give you a hammer and I say, okay, here's a fence, okay, here's a fence. And you need to, is there a fence around me? I don't really see a fence around me, that's okay. I give you a hammer, give you some nails, and I say, here's a fence. These nails have to go into the fence. I've given you a tool, I've given you all the tools you need, right? But if you just sit there with the hammer and the nails in your hand, or if you put them on the ground and kind of look at them, the nails are never going in the fence. <laughs> it's the same concept, right? You have to actually use the opportunities around you. 
And so when you're looking at study abroad programs, if you're looking to 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 go to a different country to learn a language, you have to have an honest conversation with yourself and say, how, first of all, do you think there's a good chance that you're going to use the opportunities? If you have extreme social anxiety, I would highly recommend that you maybe you don't go on the study abroad because it's going to scare the living daylights out of you, probably, right? If you have high social anxiety. I knew a girl who would literally... Um, would literally have anxiety just to go and talk to a stranger like in a supermarket. Like if you're going to go buy something and there's the person behind the cashier, if you can't do that in your own mother tongue, well, geez Louise, you're going to like have a panic attack or faint. Like <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you get the picture I'm trying to paint you here. So you need to think about that. Are you actually going to like, do you think you're likely to take advantage of the opportunities around you? The other thing, and it's, it's along the same vein, along the same train of thought, is preparing in advance, making sure that you know that when you get to the country, here's kind of how you want to take advantage of being in that country. It's like uh, the first time I went to China, I went there for a month. I did not do this, and I, reg I, I, and I could have gotten way more out of that trip if I did. I naively, incorrectly thought to myself, if I go to China for a month and I'm living with the family and I'm just taking intensive classes and all I'm doing is trying to talk to Chinese people, and that's all I do, I'm going to learn a lot. This is a common belief, by the way, and it is not 100% true. You will learn a lot, absolutely, if you're going to be brave and do it. That's like what I did, right? And I learned a ton. But boy, I could have learned so much more if I just prepared a little bit in advance. If I'd known some basic phrases, like heck, if I'd known something before going. Basic phrases. If I'd thought through some of the conversations, some of the things I would have to tell the family, if I thought through those and learned those in advance, it would have saved me so much time and allowed me to build so much more. If I just thought about, okay, what am I going to be doing between my classes? What will I do in the evenings? If I thought about that in advance, I would have been stuck up in my room being like, what do I do? What do I do right now? I don't know anyone. I have no idea. If I'd done the research to realize that China doesn't have Google and this is the search engine they use, that would have been helpful because I went through so much time not even knowing how to pull open a search engine on my phone because my phone, like, I didn't know what website to visit to open a search engine. That would have been better if I'd prepared in advance. So there is, if you can think through things in advance before arriving, it's going to be amazing for you. That's, a, that's probably one of the biggest, one of the biggest things that I can really recommend the last thing I'll say on these study abroad programs, um, and actually probably second last thing, but is that uh, you really, you really need to look at your learning style. And I guess that's in the similar vein of what I've been saying, but I cannot stress this enough. Like, if I, if I had to learn how to dance, okay? Like, if I had to learn a specific dance, like uh, salsa or like whatever, bachata, I had to learn like some, whatever, any kind of dance. And it was something I'd never seen before. It was brand new. <sighs> I'm not the guy who would learn by going to the clubs and dancing that with people. Like if I had to learn salsa, I'm not going to learn it by going to salsa clubs and, and dancing with the girls and doing salsa dancing. It's not going to happen. That's not going to happen for me, guys, right? I'd be too nervous. I would not have the courage to go and get out there and make mistakes in front of people and, and be kind of silly and approach people and ask them to dance and that whole game. That's not, that would be really stressful for me. Like, and I would not learn that way. I would need to like be in a smaller environment, a much more controlled environment with not as many uncontrollable variables. Like someone was really outlining some of the basics for me. I'd probably have to watch some videos in advance and like kind of get my brain in the right space of like, okay, what am I going to be learning? I do way more research. I practice way more before even showing up anywhere to, to, to dance salsa in public, for example. Like there, I would treat it very differently because I know how I feel about that subject matter, and I know I know myself when it comes to that. So for languages, pff, throw me throw me off the plane, like give me a parachute, throw me off the plane in the country, and I'll off I'll go, and I'll figure it out, and I'll learn, right? Give me some Google, give me a phone, give me like I, I can I got this, right? I don't I don't care if people like people make fun of me, like that stuff does, it bothers me a little bit, but I can deal with it. 
but other aspects, no man. Like, so you've got to make sure that whatever you're doing, however you, and this is a general piece of advice, however you choose to learn a language, study abroad or not, right? Whatever you're doing, classes or not, apps on your phone or not, Google or not, YouTube or not, blog posts or no blog posts, textbook or no textbook, teacher or no teacher, no matter what you're doing, right? You've got to make sure it matches. You've got to make sure it matches with how you learn and what what's going to work for you. And you got to use that self-awareness about how you're feeling. You got to touch and you got to like check in with your emotions. How are you feeling about that strategy? Are you nervous? You should probably deal with that, right? You should figure that out. Are you excited? Great, use it. Are you angry at the teacher because they're not teaching you well? Cool, you got to adjust. You got to use that. Do some, excuse me, burped. Um, do something with it, right? It's probably the biggest thing I can tell you guys. Um, that's just a general piece of advice. But anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your attention. And is this like not centered, by the way? I feel like I'm not centered today. Something's a little bit up with this angle. I don't really know. Anyway, um, we'll chat later. Bye for now. See you guys.